May the peace be widespread. May the seas be like greenstone, a pathway for us all this day. Give love, receive love. Let us show respect for each other. Let it be so. As I say, there are no apologies. I'll just ask also if any councillors have any interest in um, the item above and beyond your interest as a member of our community. Um, if you could declare that interest uh, as we go along. Today we just have the one item on our agenda, it's item 4.1, the annual plan 2020-21 deliberations. Uh, the recommendations are on page one, but I would, would like to be taking those in part. So we've got recommendations one, two and three. Recommendation one, that Council note the 122 ballot submissions received on the annual plan 2020-21 consultation document. Two, accept two late submissions received outside the consultation period. And three, deliberate on submissions relating to the annual plan 2020-21 consultation question. Do I have a mover for those recommendations, please? Councillor Peters is moving a seconder. Yep. Councillor Coppola is seconding. So, um, I'm, uh, oh, can I also please note that for an early departure for Councillor Peters, who will be leaving, uh, needing to leave at 10 a.m., um, and hopefully she will be able to return after a short um, break away. So we, um, we have the deliberations. I'm actually going to, to hand over to Dominic uh, to give us a bit of background on the process that we've followed to date so that we're all clear on what we are doing today. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, well, it was worth just having a brief overview of how we got to this point, um, recognising that this has been an annual plan process like no other. So obviously, early on, we had a number of reference with Council. We were working through basically year three of the long-term plan and no material changes to that and no consultation as a result. Just as we were finalising the budgets, um, when COVID hit and we started to get a picture of what that meant for Council in terms of 
um, revenue expenses, but ultimately what they mean for our community. So quite quickly, we moved into a process to come up with obviously the, the 10 point day and the key components of that were reviewing our operations, um, our expenses, and reviewing the rates rise um, for the coming year, which Alan and the team worked through and brought back to you on the 30th of April. So at that point, we endorsed uh, for further work a 2.2% performance rate rise and a 3 million relief package. A lot of work was done in the background to bring that back to the meeting of the 14th of May and basically to enable us to complete that process we looked at a targeted consultation process focusing on what the material changes were to, to year three as a result. So the consultation document that we, we considered on the 14th of May, we looked at our response to COVID-19 as the overarching umbrella question, but also those three components around rates, the relief package, and potentially seeking our facility for government funding. We did note in the consultation document and throughout the process, um, given that there was such a targeted consultation, we would pick up those key issues that fell outside of those, the scope, if you like, of those key, key components and bring them to you through the long term planning process. So, what you've got in front of you is quite different to what you had the previous years um, in terms of the deliberation report, report. It is very focused on those key components of the consultation, but what we have tried to do is give you some admittedly high level staff analysis, um, which was possible in the time ahead, of the other issues that have come through uh, that could relate to the long term plan, which we're literally kicking off now, and we'll do more analysis on those and bring them back through the long term plan process, along with obviously staff system management plans, and we'll feedback on the, the priorities and projects that you'd like to improve the long term plan. So, that in a nutshell is where we are today. Um, and that's, that's Thank you, Dominic. Councillors, any questions for Dominic before we go into the deliberations process? Councillor Coppola? Yes, Madam Chair. Um, in relation to the submissions that were done, I've noticed that you haven't itemised it out as in like individuals versus groups. Is there a reason for that? I guess it's on the basis that all submissions are equal. And uh, what I would say is that the staff summary you have got is not a substitute for the submissions themselves. So obviously, it, it, it aids the process for you to review those submissions, but you have more submissions as well. Any other questions for Dominic? Councillor Cooper? Um, we're deliberating, Dom, on, on, on the rate take, which is a significant part of our income. Uh, has the financial situation changed since the last update um, that we received and would it have been helpful to have had a, a, a financial update? So I would say the, the, the dust is still settling. Um, so I think the PSA the, so still don't know what the um, medium to long term where things will land. It's probably a question for the long term plan, but I would um, just glance over to our Chief Financial Officer and there's no further substantive information that we could deliver at this point. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay, so um, now we'll move into the deliberations of the submissions and uh, um, as Dominic has outlined from page 10 of our agenda, was a, a high level uh, summary of the um, analysis of the uh, submissions that were received. So uh, I'm sure that you've devoured the, the volumes um, and uh, I'm opening it up now to deliberations on the submissions that we received through the, the process. Councillor Holtz. Yes, Your Worship. I've got one issue. Uh, I just went back and had a look at our meeting on it. The minutes of our meeting of 12th of March, or in our March meeting, we actually introduced a few um, conditions, mainly to do with the COVID situation, but uh, rent relief and various things at that meeting, and we carried that through. Uh, I'm actually disappointed in our recommendation here that no change to be made to the annual plan, because one of the, one of the reasons why council has voted to go out for public consultation was to make sure there's no abnormal situation out there. Well, 
reading through the submissions, I think it's quite clearly illustrated that there is one glaring illustration of being a bit abnormal. That is to do with the Hickory Race Scheme. We've, we've indicated that they pay 2.2% normal rate increase plus another 8% in the targeted rate. And you know, that goes against the very principles of the last meeting where we actually said we'd give some rate relief to various people in, in hardship. So I, I think that needs to be addressed. And what I'd like to see is we support the submission of uh, postponing the, the rate increase of 8% this year. And they continue to pay their 2.2% as everyone else does in the district. But it's a, it's a question of a fair and equitable and um, to be fair to the funders of the Hickory Farm Scheme, to all the fellow councillors here, this does not affect another project in council. We're not taking my, another project out of the long term plan or the annual plan. The Hickory Farm Scheme is a ring fenced account and they've built up a surplus in the current account of over $570,000 sitting there for in case of emergency work on the swamp. It's fully funded by the ratepayers in that area. So ring fence, so it doesn't affect any other, other project in council. Now, currently, the forecast is, even if abnormal, one in abnormal effect, they still have $470,000 there to, to maintain it through the whole year. They've actually, over the last, in this last 10 year plan, they've reduced the massive debt down to under 100, uh, down to a million dollars. But they are in charge of their own destiny there. They make the commitments, they fund it, Etc. Et so I'd like to see council support reduction of that eight percent postponement for this this calendar this financial year. No, I'd like to declare an interest in that. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin is declaring interest as a um, a rate payer in the Hickory Swamp Scheme, so you won't take part in any discussion around this topic. Councillor Murphy. Thank you. So just a question on that, because there were some very good submissions um, from many of the farmers involved, and they raised some really you know, valid points about the fact that farmers have been under strain through first the drought and then COVID. And I'm just wondering if the deliberations report staff didn't really speak to that request, and so I'm just wondering if um, staff could please um, explain why we would be sticking with that. Was it the 8.2%? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Thank you, Chair. So the options considered by Council in leading into the consultation document were around the general rate increase. So obviously we, we did the consultation document based on consulting on the 2.2% versus um, status quo. The supporting documents to, like, to the consultation document likewise were focused on that. So at the eight points, 8% or well, the Canadian swamp as a target rate wasn't a component that was um, put forward a consultation that would be modelled. Thank you, Dominic. Um, and just to be clear, councillors, that, that the point that Dominic is making is that we did not consult on changing any of the other targeted rates. There are a number of targeted rates. But I agree with you, Councillor Hulse, in that we, we could um, look at that. I, I wonder whether Simon would be able to give us a, an indication of if the uh, increase were not applied in this financial year, are there projects that could be deferred that would put the, the swamp scheme in a, in a deficit position or, or re remove the risk of it going into deficit? by not getting the increase? Because the, the, my understanding, Councillor Holtz, is that we, there's still a million dollars in deficit. Yep. Um, it was three, it's now yep. down to one. Yep. Um, and that was made quite clear in one of the submissions, which I appreciated. Um, but I wonder whether through, we, what, would be the what would be the implications if we chose not to apply the increase to the Hickering Swamp rate this financial year? Thank you, Simon. Would you mind coming over here? Um, I was just seeking clarification on that. The, um, it just means it will take longer to pay the debt. The intention when we set the, uh, the rates a few years ago for that was to try and get to zero balance uh, for the scheme and to get some surplus into the scheme so that we could have a stronger pump replacement program. So it would just push that out. 
Thank you. Um, uh, Councillor Cooper and Councillor Cuthbert. Simon, you might want to just... Thank you, Your Worship. I, I, I very much support the um, point that Councillor Hulse has raised. I rang uh, one of the farmers that had made the submission to make sure I, I understood it. Uh, that there is real hardship and lack of ability to um, uh, create an income that they require. The drought has been significant. As a council, we haven't really addressed any of the, uh, what has been, uh, sorry, I'll rephrase that. It's, it's uh, less obvious the benefit we are giving to some of the rural um, people. In my opinion, uh, this should be deferred and we um, also should signal that we wish to talk about some of the is other issues that are raised uh, within their uh, submission because they seem to me to be very valid concerns around the amount of money it takes to run the scheme and those sort of things as well. So I very much support uh, the initiative to, to make it a defer that rate increase. Councillor Cooper, Councillor <clears throat> Just a question, Your Worship, on this, and I have some sympathy, but if, if as, as you say, we haven't specifically consulted on it, then does it create some precedent in terms of other um, rating issues that we haven't specifically consulted on if we did take a stand on this? I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm quite supportive of the idea, saying. but and so, and that's a good question. Up? So we do need to look at um, the potential risk of a, um, a challenge if we change things uh, which, which we did not consult on. Dominic, do you have any feedback on that? Uh, yes, I think you've summed up quite well. Um, there is a risk to any change that's outside of the consultation scope. The risk comes at the point of challenge. However, in this case, obviously, that would be a result of a submission and it would be a request to be in, but there's still that risk there for challenge. I think there would be a greater risk if we were adding a um, budget as opposed to reducing. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking that if, if there were a major project that were being brought in as a result of submissions, that we would have a greater risk of the community objecting to that process. Uh, Councillor Peters. Um, I support uh, Councillor um, Hulse's argument and I think that it's really important for us to be supportive of our rural community during this time, just aware that many of them are still struggling under the effects of the drought because they haven't had feed. Thank you, Councillor Peters. Councillor Cocorillo. Yeah. Mr. Manager, just a point of clarification here. The um, eight percent which is which has been itemised in the documents refers to a specific project, does it not? It is the targeted it's the yeah. increase over and above the targeted rate for the Higarini Swamp scheme. Yep, but it's specifically for the Higarini Swamp Correct. Correct. So it's not affecting anybody else. No. It is solely for the Higarini people. So the, the question I've come back to then on top of that is um, how is this actually differentiating from what our, um, w as we go out, because we're asking to people to talk on the rates, so are we actually deviating at all from that topic by saying we don't want to have it? I think the, um, my interpretation is that because it is a ring-fenced targeted rate and it was, it is specifically in the long-term plan for a process of um, increases, incremental increases year on year, until the debt is re recovered, uh, that my understanding would be that because the other, the whole general database isn't affected by any change to it, we could apply a, a specific um, change to that targeted rate without affecting the, the rest of the database. Hence the reason I was asking my question, <laughs> because if it, was, if it was for the whole district, then we, then we can actually quite easily change it. And I'm, I'm quite conscious that this, doc, this particular ring fencing is separate from the, well, is part of the rates, the rates take, so it should be able to be exempt. So it shouldn't be any, any, any chance for anyone to, to um, challenge. challenge it. Thank you, that's the words I was after. There is still a risk, but it's been mitigated by that fact, I agree. Councillor Deming, probably pretty clear where my sympathies are likely to lie. Um, 
the thing that I'm wondering is whether it's in the Hagarani Swamp people's best interests to defer the entire 8% or would they be better to pay something like 2% this year? But I mean I definitely support looking at the option and reducing the rate that's been imposed. I think based on the submissions that we've received they're asking for that increase to be deferred. Yeah. So it just won't be the cleanest way, but, but I agree that it will have an impact on future years. Yeah, exactly. I remember when we deferred the rate completely after a serious flood, and that caused a lot of um, issues further down the track with the young farmers. But I'd certainly support mm. um, what Council Fox is putting forward. Mm. Councillor Murphy, another question? Or did you wish to speak to that? Have yeah, I had a question before, so I just wanted to make a comment. My thinking was along the same lines as Councillor Demons, because it is important, and I'm sure that the farmers also want to see that debt paid off. Um, and so I think there were, there were definitely a couple of submissions that said if, the eight, if it was on an 8% deferral, would it at least be a 2.2% increase? Because it's important that we do get those plants replaced. You know, that's really critical as well. So I agree with Councillor Demons, maybe we need to look at you know, some options in the middle of something. Can I just make it clear, it's not about not continuing with the program of pump replacement or anything, it is the, the target rate is specifically about clearing the debt, the long-term debt. Oh, Dominic's going to... Just to return my comment, um, there are projects in the back end of the long-term plan for additional works, so obviously any slowdown now will place the scheme of worst position for the into those projects in a higher debt position. But we can address that through the long-term plan process. Okay. Yeah, but I think it is clear, um, important to have that dis differentiation between recovering debt and um, the, the, the scheme itself and the works in the scheme. So, is there any further discussion on that? On the green, so, Councillor Reid. Thank you, Your Worship. Well, back the deferment of that eight. I know a number of those farmers out there and they're in dire straits at the moment. Um, their income streams are being hammered with milk prices. Um, there's one guy out there just to pay the targeted rate on his farm means he has to raise 250 head of cattle on what for you farm. Yeah. So I'm just trying to craft a, a um, I am listening to you, I, I can multitask. <laughs> Thank you Councillor Reid. There is one farmer out there who just to pay the targeted rate on his piece of land, he has to raise in fact 250 head of cattle. Now that, that's a massive undertaking on its own and that's before he runs the rest of the farm. So any help we can assist these guys any deferment is only a deferment that's going to affect them further down the track. It's not going to affect the, the district as a whole. There's still almost half of the money owed is going to be sitting there even with that deferment of that 8% if I'm reading the figures correctly. So I think in life, and they had a flood recently where the pumps were turned on so they had regrassing costs they had to buy an extra feed. Uh, they're on hiding or nothing, and I think they deserve an apology from us for not being on the ball with them. So I'm back from the 8% Thank you, Councillor Reid. Councillors, what I'm doing is just getting a, um, a, a, a draft recommendation for us to be able to separate that out. Um, but I just need that to be um, properly processed through. My, my thoughts, um, I agree with the, the sentiment as I was reading the submissions. Um, I, re I recall when we made the decision to go out for consultation and um, it was made clear to us that the Hickory Swamp was, was separate from that in target rate and we specifically chose not to do anything about that at the time. And um, clearly the, the people who are affected by not only the drought but the impacts of COVID have, um, have given us their feedback through the submissions process and um, I will admit to, to feeling that it was um, if we could 
if we could defer that increase for this financial year, then that would be the right thing to do. So I'm hoping that we can craft something that will reflect that. I also um, have been in contact with um, members from, from uh, people from MPI, and there are a lot of initiatives that are supporting people through uh, the, the, the drought relief packages in number of, numbers of different ways. So while the rates for um, some farmers within the district, um, that increase was separate from any other in rates increases, then I do set, know that there are other options for them to apply for support through government funding initiatives as well. So they're not alone in this um, and are being supported. Obviously, it's not going to cover everything. So um, anything further on the Hagrini Swamp submissions? Are there any other submissions um, that we wish to deliberate on? You wish have already moved, moved through that would be things so I want to write a reply to this. Well, it's not actually, you didn't move anything, Councillor Hulse. We, we are deliberating. When we come through to the next part of the, um, the process, I would imagine that you will have a recommendation that you can speak to. We, we, at the moment, we are, I need this to make this very clear. We are deliberating on the submissions. We're not making any recommendations about changes or anything to the annual plan. That comes in the next step of the process. So we're taking into account the submissions that we've all read, the feedback that we've got for those, and deliberating on what impact, if any, that would, would have, and we'll move into um, making any changes to the recommendations beyond that in the second part. Councillor Murphy. Thank you. Um, I'm just hope the staff could give some clarification. We've got a few submissions from around the football hub. Football hub. Um, and those submissions uh, uh, describe that council had withdrawn or cut the proposed funding in half. And yet looking through the annual plan statement of proposal, etc., I couldn't find any information that referred to that. And so I'm just wondering if staff can explain where that uh, came from. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. That is another one, yes, that we do need some clarification on. And um, hopefully Dominic will be able to give us the response. Uh, so he's through there. Uh, you'll recall through February and March, we talked about um, getting a, a deliverable capital program. And while that's an operational grant that sits within that overall capital projects program, that was one that staff had looked at in terms of timing that may not be able to be delivered next financial year. There was a proposal to ship that out and have a proposal to work through and get the FD and Infix for our bringing the year support. However, given COVID, there have been some changes with the timing and some straight flows, and that's one of the things we brought back as a substitution without any change. So it's just managing the timing of projects within the capital program. And that discussion that has been in terms of how um, the, the stakeholders um, found out about that's just an ongoing operational discussion with, with our stakeholders as we work through the program. Thank you for that question, Councillor Murphy. Has somebody got a telephone going? Can you hear one? Okay, two. That side. It's over there. It's over there. Okay, so um, there was one other uh, aspect that I would like some clarity on um, around the uh, Gomez Road. There were a number of submissions from Hikorangi. They were very active, the submissions round. Um, and the, the recommendation was to defer that through to the long term plan. Um, process which I would um, agree with. Uh, I think um, given the late submission that um, had a, a quite a contra view to that, um, I would say that that would be something that we could address through the long term plan process. So hopefully that will align with our thinking on, on that particular project. Councillor Deeming, I'd like to comment on that too. Thank you. The submissions that came in about Gopher's Road were very impressive. But recalling that the issues that we had when Council suggested pretty much exactly the same thing, I think we would be wise to defer that to a long term plan so that the community as a whole can discuss it. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Murphy, I'm just going to something. All they're asking for here is for the staff time and the planning so that they can plan going forward. And whenever we have a project in Council, the initial uh, planning and consenting is critical. 
We have a huge amount of the information that they require. It just needs the authorization to, to it may not cost 15 grand, they don't really know that, it's, but they're the geese when they have the meeting. But this huge support you can see from the school and everywhere. And um, it's it's good that it's up and running again. Um, Councillor Murphy and I have a meeting where they talked about all sorts of things that we looking into. But they just need to get it so that they can make sure that all the work that's been done in the past is brought forward, worked through, so that they can progress. And if they can do that work now, then they can apply for more funding through the LTP to create something that is so critical. And if anyone's read the submissions, they'll see how important it is. Because they used to have bike rides at a public park from Maverick School, and that was their major fundraiser. The um, Wananaki School used to have it on the coast, and the Bukaroo School used to have the bike rides in the Hickory School. And that's how they get a major part of their fundraising. But it is getting more and more difficult, and most farmers are too scared to let a whole lot of people come on and just hack around on their property. So it's important that we get a facility for these people. And with any luck, they will keep them out of sand dunes because that's one place where they can go and move now. So I, I think it's critical that we do this first step of authorising the uh, such a tiny amount, really, when you look at our whole budget of 160 million, just to get it started and get the initial work done so they can go, go on with the conceive, the conceive to, to move forward. So I think that we should seriously have that Councillor Martin, while I have some initial support for what you're saying, when, if we say 15,000 is a, such a small amount, it's we get that incremental creep. And <coughs> that's half of our council lunches, you know, the budget which we've cut. So, you know, that's the, that's the kind of thing we have to be very, very careful of. If we pursue our 2.2% increase, there will be cuts. And I, I think I personally think we need to be really careful about um, picking a project when we've got staff numbers are being reduced uh, and not replaced. Um, the operational budgets are being constrained, and I just I, I fear that if we are picking one particular project, then we'll have 14 one particular projects, and we'll be out. Um, we won't be in a balanced budget position. Having said that, can I just check with our Chief Executive as to whether or not there are some things that we can progress it before the long-term plan? Through you, Madam Chair. Look, the short answer is I don't know, but we can try. Um, mm -hmm. Just to give councillors some context around this, because we, you are starting to see the effects of what was uh, probably perceived to be a minor budget reduction, but in essence, council's spending power has dropped by, my guesstimate is 7 to 10% from last year. Um, our staff numbers are now 49 staff, our current staff numbers are 49 below what we expected to have now. That's, that's over 10%. So we, uh, staff time which used to be relatively easy is now a constraint and you will see it as a constraint increasingly um, because we haven't replaced, basically haven't replaced anyone since lockdown. Um, and we've had retirements and a whole lot of things like that. So we've managed it without doing redundancies, but we have significantly cut that. That said, obviously the staff will do what they can to work with this community and, and see how we can manage this and possibly get a project ready for the, for the LTP. Um, but please, Anna, um, we need to understand that these budget, this 2.2% inflation budget increase is taken up entirely by the recovery package. It's actually zero and when you take all the other income cuts like we're getting less money out of parking, less money out of commercial property and things like that, we're actually 7 to 10 percent lower in our ability to spend. So that's what the staff have been having to find is, is budget cuts for that and it's hurting um, projects and you'll see that coming through more and more. So that's the context of where we are. Thank you Rob. Uh, Councillor Benny. Um, yeah, I, and, and I hear what Rob says, but I, I was pleased and I support the, the, uh, the Gomez Road project. And I know it's been going on for a long, long time, since a long time ago when I was in Hickory. And, um, I, and, and I, I read their submissions and they talk about 15,000, but a lot of it's just a bit of love and all they may need is some guidance 
and push it in the right direction and be able to apply for some money from some sort of funders. And I, I hope that we can, and I, and I know um, from going to the Tikipunga meeting last night that the staff are out there doing this stuff. And it may be that if uh, a staff member gives them a little bit of love and points them in the right direction and they apply for some funding from one of the many organisations that provide funding, they'll be in the way because I think it's a really good project and one that's gone on for a long, long time and something that we could really progress and it, and it may not be a, a, any burden at all on this council, so uh, I'm, I'm fully in support of it. Thank you, Councillor Ben. Councillor Holtz? Yeah, I'd just like to echo the words Councillor Ben just mentioned and uh, also remember that Hickering is one of our, one of our schemes to upgrade the uh, Hickering Township instead and this is a vital component to that. You know, add value to what work we already do. So I support that the submission as well. Councillor Cutforth. Thank you, Worship. Um, I'm not sure whether this is part of the deliberations or part of the questions or whatever, but actually firstly I just want to acknowledge one thing that we have possibly um, overlooked today, and today is the 16th of June, and on the 16th of June 1976 it was Soweto Day. And for some of those of us who are old and grey, who will remember Soweto Day was a day when um, a number of 176 school children were killed actually by the police in, in um, South Africa. So it's a day that I, when I see the 16th of June, it's something that I always remember. So I just want to, to acknowledge that, that day actually and, and what happened that day, um, which is not part of the, I know the Whangarei District Council annual plan, but nevertheless it's important. Um, my question or comment or whatever, it's just related to the, so it's not about Gomez Road, though I, I totally agree that that could be part of the spatial plan exercise that we're doing there. But it is around the question of the, um, where staff have decided that some submissions were about funding, specifically funding, and so they should be held over for the long-term plan. And I know some of the groups that I was working with, I certainly suggested to them that they look at how their activities had been impacted by COVID um, and relate that to their submission and so um, with, with the view to looking at how they could be triaged, I think is the current word, um, through to the relief package that we were suggesting in the long term plan. So I was a bit <coughs> surprised or concerned or whatever to see that um, they've just been seen as just requests for funding per se and sort of sent through to the to the LTP members. I was thinking that they were, it was really groups that have been impacted by COVID and therefore were looking at um, some support from council through that relief package. So I just had, I guess it's, it is sort of a question for staff about the, um, we've got requests for funding that will inform a long term plan. Actually, <coughs> Aren't they part of this annual plan process and our response for the, for the, to the community um, in terms of the impact it's having? That is a, um, a, a really important point and the relief package does include additional funding to, for community groups. So I would anticipate that while we, the changes to the annual plan won't happen as a result of them, we will be directing those um, specific groups to the relief package that we, uh, if, if it goes through. So I, I agree with you and it's a really good point that you make um, and um, I'm sure that everybody in the room, the staff are certainly nodding and, and that where possible they will be directed to the packages that we have created to enable that response for projects to or support for groups to, to go ahead. Um, but there will be some that will need to be directed through to the to the long term plan. So there'll be a combination of both. But I agree with you that um, <coughs> in the analysis, it could, could have been possible to identify that that maybe that um, that, that fits within the category of, of the community grants or you know, etc. Et so that's a it's a good point. Given that um, submissions closed on the fourth of June, and here we are on the sixteenth of June, so we don't know. But um, and and that ability to dive deeply into each submission um, was quite constrained and I appreciate the work that has gone into the, the um, deliberations but it's a good point to make. So can I just <coughs> ask then really we're on page 15 of our report where we've got 11 submitted support request for funding blah, blah, blah. assuming that we as a council accept the general line of our um, 
of, of, of the relief package, will staff therefore look at those organisations and look at whether and which of those can be considered for the relief package or will there be another process? My, I would say that the feedback from submissions will be specifically for those ones will direct them to the processes that we have in place through this, this financial year rather than saying you know um, you will you, you know you might be qualified for funding here and there and everywhere it will be these are the processes that we have because there will be funding rounds I, I agree with you I mean the Chinese language week was a perfect one um, let's go through, put that through community funding applications and, and we will feed back to those 11 organisations the processes that we have in the coming financial year that may or may not support those initiatives. Okay, so just following through, so saying um, for request, formal submissions requesting funding will form the long term plan is actually not, not totally accurate, in fact it may um, there may be a process prior to that. Well, it could be a combination of both. <coughs> okay. yes. mm. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cooper. Thank you. Um, this discussion has thrown up a number of interesting points. Um, Councillor Bernie suggested that we can direct staff to where they might send their love, which may be overstepping our mark as a chamber, I'm not quite sure. But also, uh, the subject of our council lunches has come up and um, the savings that have been made there. Now, I support very much the fact that $15,000 going to the school in the or, or the, the Gomez Road project because uh, I can't think of a better, better use for it. Um, so, there. So, I'd just like to have that say thank you and have you know, record my support there. Thank you. Um. Councillor Cooper, I would suggest that if you are directing, if you are proposing to direct changes to the budget, that will need to come through in the next part of the process. And I would imagine that you would move and second, and we would we would vote on that because we cannot today um, pick a project and and say I, I support it unless you deliberately go through a. a my apologies. I was just trying to support the submission. I hear you. Thank you very much. And, and just a follow up to Councillor Cutforth's comments. Um, so, in, in relation to the relief package, how proactive are we as an organisation going to be in promoting that? Are we going to wait for the, the applications to come in? Um, or are we going to keep going out? And I would hope that we do keep going out and are proactive in approaching organisations that are affected, for instance, hospitality, advising them exactly what they can claim for because I've spoken to some of the operators who are not really sure if or anything they, they can apply for and I would like us to be really proactive and I'd like us to spend that $3 million rather than wait for it and hope it doesn't get to that table. So. Councillor Benny, until we've decided that we are actually going to have it available, um, we, we couldn't be proactive. So, given that the financial year starts on July one, and that there are, you know, the, the relief package is, is for community groups, businesses, and ratepayer support. Um, once today is over, if we get it, through, if we get the change proposed, then our our staff can actually swing into action. But until that point, we, you know, there this is a, a draft. It's a proposal, it's, a, it's for consultation. But I, I hear what you're saying, and collectively, I mean, through your committee, you will be encouraging your um, group to be promoting the community group's funding. Yes, but a specific question is, is how proactive are we going to be in, for instance, our uh, hospitality businesses, will they be getting a letter saying this is what you can apply for? Is there any plans for anything like that? And I know this is only proposals and all that, but I would imagine that there is some planning going on. Can I defer that one to the office? Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, look, we, we will, if this is adopted, then we will go into the um, usual forms of communication, so we'll make sure that we make um, available through the newspapers etc etc if someone is going to do for a, um, a renewal of for example a hospitality thing we could just add that to the bottom of the, of the letter um, we'll probably write to hospitality New Zealand and tell them um, it's pretty easy to, to talk to the local branch of that we know who they are so 
That's there. Now, I cannot promise you that everyone will know because um, my experience is that no matter where you put it and how much you do, someone comes in and says, no one ever told me. Um, having just posed down something around, or, or watched something yesterday about um, our car parking changes where we had them in the newspaper for about a month, um, I know that you can't, you know, not everyone knows. So hopefully we'll get to as many as possible, but I cannot guarantee you that everyone who should know will. Yeah, and, and, and I can, but just, just, I see Hospitality New Zealand have made a submission, so I assume they will be getting a reply, and it's up to them. I mean, that, that's all we can do as an organisation, so I'm happy with that. Yeah, so through the support for businesses, the grants to offset licence fees are, will be, would be available once we adopt it. Thank you. Uh, Dominic. Uh, just three, so I just thought it was probably worth one comment, I guess, in terms of what you consulted on, we looked at the rating, basic level of the rates increase, the funding line for the relief package and where the components will be split with that. There will be operational processes to work through as, as the Chief Executive's outlined. Um, those will connect with our stakeholders and give the opportunity where they meet the, the criteria and the splits that you decide on to apply for those. Um, and I'd also say we also were quite clear in the consultation document that there are going to be operational processes and acknowledging the constraints that we will have on staffing levels, but looking at something like the Gomez Road um, proposal, we are doing place making within Pekarani. That wouldn't provide for a consenting process in the staff time, but certainly would provide for a discussion of the outcomes that the community wants in that space and whether at a community level that as well. So, so the things that we can do operationally, but today is really about the year those the budget lines that we consulted on sit and, and the split of those budget lines. And, and we note that there was uh, two submissions that were basically saying that split's not quite right. Uh, and we do consider those submissions within the staff analysis. Thank you, Dominic. Councillor Innes. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. And really just coming back, uh, in terms of the uh, pilot project that we have in Hakarang, in terms of placemaking, and I feel that uh, uh, that's a place for consideration because it's one that will involve the, the wider community and, and looking at priorities. So I really caution against uh, looking at things on an ad hoc basis, and I feel that uh, we do have a long-term plan, but I think we, we have placemaking uh, being undertaken and provides a very good avenue uh, for the community to be involved and just look at what the priorities are within that community. So uh, part of that relates to central government and funding from central government, but it also coordinates all the activities that we have as a council. So. Uh, I feel placemaking might be the appropriate place to consider that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ellis. That's a good point. Councillor Deming, supporting Councillor Ellis's views. I very much support the Gomez Road <coughs> proposal and project, and did last time, even when we were faced with a lot of banner waving people in the gallery, and quite a bit of criticism in the press, as I recall. But it is a really good project. I'd love to see it proceed, but I wouldn't support altering the annual plan to add financial implications there because there are a lot of other projects where we've said to people don't put them forward in the annual plan that's not the place for them at this point these are the topics that we're um, consulting on so I wouldn't support a change to the annual plan but I certainly support the project and whatever staff with the information that they've already got could hand on because that was pretty well planned earlier Thank you, Councillor Deeming. Councillor Murphy? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Murphy? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to go back to the big picture, and I think it was really interesting in the um, bulk of the submissions, was it 62% of them? People actually understood um, why Council need a rates increase, even if it's inflation only, and I noticed a lot of people submitted that they would actually support a higher rates increase. And it's just so interesting listening to the discussion, you know, we're, we're talking about the one proposal for Gomez Road, but as Councillor Deeming has just highlighted, you know, what, we, what we're going to have here is less staff, less money, um, and I think we really need to think about, <coughs> I mean, the 2.2%, 2 .2 as our C has indicated, we're going to be operating on, you know, tight, 
and I just I think it was I think it's great that when you look to the submissions, our community they really understand why the, the rates take this place. It's so important because that's what enables us to you know provide walking and cycling, parks and recreation, community facilities. You know they really understand it, and I think um, for me I would I would actually even look to supporting. You know, I understand why um, our rates are so much different. It's great that our community understands that too. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Councillor Cockerell. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Look, I was, I was just going through it um, because I, I, I get I originally when I went through the submissions, I actually got different figures to what the staff had. So I, I thought I'd just quickly clarify mine just to make sure I was on the right path. Um, when you take out the submissions which actually don't talk about rate rise at all or a rate decrease, you actually remove them, that takes over half of, half of the submissions are taken out of the, the submission process. And when I started going through it, you know, just in the first first report, uh, first, what do they call it, first uh, volume, yeah, volume, we'll go volume, first volume. Um, there were 16 who actually said they wanted to have the rates zero, 16 who said they, they, well, they didn't say anything, and only 6 said that they wanted to have it increased. When you turned around and go to the next volume, 8 said that they wanted to have zero, and 6 wanted to have it increased. So it, it, I, I was seeing the trend all the way through. I actually saw a lot of the people in there trying to say they actually wanted 0% uh, rates increase or less than 2.2 because they are in financial difficulties. And I'm concerned that as one of the founding things that we went out to the public for comment on, we haven't, we're, we're not even discussing that one aspect. You know, that's the biggest thing. We've got ratepayers out there who are hurting. And they've made the submissions, they've made it very clear that they're hurting. We, we've just heard about the Hickory Swamp areas, but we're ignoring the actual businesses out there and the people in this community who are hurting. And that's what we went out to ask them. So shouldn't we be discussing that? And right now, as I said, when I go through the submission process, I disagree with what the staff findings came because they lumped a whole lot of things in in the yes area when it was actually not saying for or against. So I'm just concerned. And I, as I said, if we're doing what we should be doing, we should be discussing that 0% right now. This is the chance to yep, discuss, this is your chance to deliberate on the submissions, yes. And I'm saying that it should be zero because I'm seeing the actual demand in there and I'm, I'm watching around that community, I'm walking around that community and I'm seeing the people who are hurting. And I don't believe a rate uh, relief package of three million will actually get to the right places that it needs to get to. Zero percent increase at this present in time for this next year is the only viable option. Councillor Cockerlow. Councillor Innes. Uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, just looking through what we have, uh, effectively we do have a zero rates increase. And a lot of it is about balancing. It's a balancing between uh, uh, the residents or ratepayers as a whole and uh, targeting where we need to be targeting. And uh, in very short notice, uh, we had that discussion. The staff provided us with uh, solid information. And out of that, we developed a uh, COVID-19 response strategy. Uh, and what we have in front of us uh, is a reduction from 4.2 to 2.2. And then we actually have uh, a $3 million uh, rates relief package. Uh, and I feel that a more targeted approach to dealing with um, COVID-19 is far more effective. Uh, therefore, I'm supportive of what we have there in terms of zero rates increase. The other thing I'm mindful of is that we don't really know what the impacts are going to be. And, and part of that is actually a monitoring program to understand exactly what is happening. Uh, where the severe pain is within the community, but, but also look at 
the next stage, the reset, where, where are we going? How can we do that? I was disappointed actually that we only received uh, three submissions uh, in relation to central government because I see there that central government needs to be very much part of, of the reset. So um, to go back to uh, Councillor Coccarello's comments there, I see we do have a zero rates increase and we have targeted as effectively as possible uh, through the uh, rates relief package. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Innes. Any further discussion? Councillor well, Hobbs? Yes, thank you. Uh, I just want to count some of the words our Deputy Mayor just mentioned because when you put in the paper that there's this 2.2% rate increase, we submitted pretty quarter for submissions about it. We were indicating there's a 2.2% increase. Uh, you can put words around it to, to, to base your argument, but as I brought up, when we had discussion about going out for consultation, we arrived at a 2.2%, and that's what we informed the public on. But at that stage, I, I said I'd hold back a bit of information back to debate it when we time came and time's come now. We can't keep playing the hardship card. You know, we say we haven't been able to do this, we haven't been able to do that. The reality is, it, I indicated back then that our development levies last year was up over $3 million. And that work, that work would be used to do projects in our district, upgrades of roads, etc., etc. So we've got three million extra for development contribution. Our tourism infrastructure fund assisted us to do Basketball Park and some of the other parks and Abbey Caves Park, etc., etc. You have 4.6 million, and then we got to the big one, provincial growth fund. The other day they announced they put another $4 million into the Hunterfiles project. Well, we could look at that, that we're the last call, and that could easily have had to be Wongo District Council funding that. It had we not achieved that. Had the Hunterfiles group had not obtained that money. So you're looking at an extra $10 million just off the top of our head of additional income coming in to run this council on council projects. Council owned land, council projects. So, we're not so dependent on the rate take as we used to be, because we've, we never used to get this outside funding. But now there's another avenue opening up, and we've got to be smarter that we keep keep uh, claiming our share of that, that big pie from down in Wellington. But the, the fundamental thing is, we know the projects come on, a lot of those jobs would, would have been they're covering for our rate take. We would have had to fund the, all those car parks ourselves out of our rates. So we're actually getting a subsidy quite big time from the government at this stage. And so we need to account for that and don't play the hardship game. Just position ourselves to be better the next year and position ourselves to be better the following year. <coughs> so I, I don't take the hardship thing as seriously as a lot of people <coughs> are at the moment. Councillor Cockerell brought up a good point. When people are, we're the representative of the public. People out there working every day, we're their voice. And now saying we're struggling, you know, we've got to listen. Thank you. <coughs> That's a demon. Much as I hate to say this, I don't like disagree with Councillor Cockerello and Councillor Horse. Um, I do support the rate change as we have it. We've, we had assessed previously that we needed the four point whatever to cover the costs that we had assessed as reasonable and that our community had agreed with and now we're reducing that so it's covering only the additional cost to council of carrying out the operation that we do now and I think we do need to be clear about what is capital and what is operational and the rates cover the operational expenses they don't cover the projects the big projects Development contributions cover the costs that are incurred by the development. They're not covered by rates. If we didn't have development contributions, they, we would have to have a rates increase to be able to cover them or cover them with debt, which is what happens when the development contribution doesn't um, come as planned. And what would have happened with the Hondavasa had council got stuck with the um, extra costs there. Reading through all of the submissions, which I did online, 
I felt that they reflected a balance that also reflected the community's views, talking to a lot of, talking to people, attending meetings, having discussions. I thought that the submissions actually reflected quite clearly what I was hearing within the community as well. And accordingly, since I felt the submissions gave a good balance of what the community views are, I'm very happy to support the rates as we've set them in the, in the annual plan proposal. Thank you, Councillor Deming. Any further discussion? Councillor Reid. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, if you weren't reasonably broad-minded reading all these submissions, you would be quite bewildered. Um, I think we've probably struck a reasonable balance of the 2.2 per cent. And when you did go through a lot of the submissions, it's disappointing there was only 122 of them. And we've got so many great players in the district. Um, but the, the feeling is so many wanted zero, but they still want all the council services. They still want all the assistance. They still want free parking. They still want more council staff to do more for them. They, I think they're struggling within themselves to a degree. Um, and it's, I, you know, I think we're on the right track. There is quite a bit of support for what we've done and it's just unfortunate that people seem to think we're like Lotto. Uh, we need their rates to be able to give back. And until everybody gets on that page, we are always going to have this discussion about zero rate increase and lack of council support. Uh, I think we just go with the 2.2 .2 at this stage. Thank you, Councillor Reid. Councillor Innes? Yeah. Uh, the other point, uh, Your Worship, really is the fact that we will be carrying 33 uh, submissions forward and there will be considerations in the long-term plan. So today we discuss the annual plan, but there is a relationship with the long-term plan. Uh, those submissions can go through into that process. Uh, and I see that, uh, as I mentioned before, with the monitoring that will take place, uh, will enable us to position ourselves for the reset and recovery that we need to be considering of as part of the long-term plan. So if we can just uh, put the annual plan within the context, I know that uh, in the Fongaray Heads Ward there are a number of projects that are also put forward, such as the Resource Recovery Centre. So, uh, but that's another discussion at another time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ernest. Councillor Beeney. Um, yeah, on another topic, um, the Civic Centre building. Um, I see there's only 14 submissions on it, but they were all against the building. Um, and I know that the comment from out there, is, that that is probably the most commented on issue um, in this district for me at the moment anyway. That's the one that people talk to me about the most. And I don't think we've had the, the discussion about how COVID-19 has affected uh, the new building. And I'm sure it's been had, but I know as, as council laws, I don't think we've got a united view on that. I think it's something we should be discussing frequently and we should be able to um, advise the public of where we are at with it and how this situation has affected the, the, the built, if it has at all. Um, and, I, and I know that there is a lot of uh, misinformation out there about the build and I think it's something we need to, uh, as a group, to be united on and to, and as I say, that's 14 submissions and they're all against, um, yet we just box on with it. So I think that's a topic that could be discussed more. I, I do agree with you that the, um, the project is of great interest to the community and, um, the, and we will be giving information as, as it proceeds. And you're right, um, that we need to hear from the project team what um, the, the thinking is around the changes uh, post COVID. So, um, but that's probably not a discussion for the annual plan as to whether or not we change it. But I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. 
that the, the community is expecting us to be giving them feedback on that particular project. Just a point of clarification, Your Worship. Can we actually have it a, a set, out, set out in the public whether the contract is actually being signed by the contractor? Um, yeah. uh, the Auckland contractor? The team, you mean? Um, Alan. Yeah, through the chair, there'll be a paper coming back to count the next council meeting about the project uh, contracts that are in two dates. The only contract you can add is be one for around two hundred thousand dollars, which is there from the design phase. There's no con construction contract yet. Thank you. So that's coming to the uh, June council full council meeting. Fabulous. Thank you. So just for clarification, is there a possibility that still local contractors can be involved in that? Yes. I think we will we'll wait for the update. Um, well, it's, it's, that, it's sure one of the questions that's coming out quite a bit with most I'll annuals. I'll defer to Councillor Deming's comment. I think it would be fair to say very much so, but not a con certainly not a conversation to be held within an open meeting. Thank you, Councillor Deming. Uh, Councillor Hulse. Yes, Your Worship, there's one submission here that I find uh, good on the people who put the submission in, but boy, we'll talk about the hard workers. It's to do with the wiping cycleway, where we've got a bunch of people trying to work by themselves <coughs> in isolation, when every second day they read of another, another big project in either the, the Tourism Infrastructure Fund application or, or some other thing saying they're going to create this great cycleway the length of New Zealand, Tiara or trail is going to go right over this piece of these, you know, band of about six of people who are working hard and they've worked with the local landowners, they've got easements to go across land and they've, they've completed stage one, they're on, just back to Peter's two, they're on to stage three, all as volunteers. We're in town here, everything's paid. Everything's paid by, by the rate payers or the tax payers. And, and then you get down, in, the, in their submission they're asking for $12,600 to fence an easement that a farm has donated to the project. And I said, surely we can accommodate something like that. Yeah, you know, maybe we just have to have a serious talk to our people doing the cycleway or our past manager because they need a bit of help and they need a bit of recognition. But it seems a bit strange that here we are, we've still got these one little group working in isolation, <coughs> doing some great things, but we need to teach the board. Well said, Councillor. <laughs> Councillor Cooper. Uh, I have a conflict that would go past my property, so do I need to say anything about that? Uh, no, just say get on with it. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're, you're right to acknowledge that um, you have an interest in it and that it is on your back door, on your front doorstep. Back door mm, front. Yeah. Thank you. But I'm sure you, as the local councillor, you will support the project. Absolutely. <coughs> um, yes, I'd like to go on record as supporting that. <laughs> Councillor Murphy. Thank you. Um, this goes back to what Councillor Holmes was saying earlier. Um, in one area that actually we will have more funding in is our um, refuse management because one area that we have increased was the uniform targeted rate um, for refuse management, which has increased by about 10%. So it's gone up um, to $191 per household. And I believe that's one of the highest. Um, targeted rates for refuse management in the country, which I think is quite interesting. But I just wanted to draw everyone's attention in our volume five, um, page 56, there was a submission from the High Ladies Community Resource Recovery Charitable Trust. Um, and I know there were a lot of submissions and a lot of volumes to read through. So I just wanted to um, direct Council's attention to that because um, that that amount of money through the, the taken rate for refuse management is ring fenced. Um, so I think in this year, uh, 2020 to 2021, Council will collect about $8.375 million dollars for refuse management um, across the district. And as Council will know, that, that trust, so at the moment we haven't got a um, transfer station operating out of the Bay. And so for new councils, um, that trust has been working for a couple of years to try and get a community uh, resource recovery centre off the ground. So 
So I just thought it's a, it's a really good submission and it just kind of speaks to what Council Holtz was talking about that in some areas of the Council we haven't actually seen um, funding de decrease. This, we're actually going to see an, an increase in funding in that area. So um, I, if I was able to speak to one project and pick one project, this would be the one, like you said earlier, um, Your Worship, that we would have 14 projects, everyone would have something that they were passionate about and would like to see funding given to. This would be the one that I would speak, speak for. But I think it's a great submission and um, I hope everyone has had the time to read it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Councillor Martin. Yes, it's interesting about the 2.2. I support the 2.2 increase because if you have a look at the LTP, the annual plan for 1718, we we're going to get 92 million in from rates. And in year and 10 of the LTP, we're getting 145 million. So it's clear that has been out of consultation. It's been, everybody has had input over a long period. If we start cutting the projects that have to be done and take too much money out of that at the front end, we're going to have to make up some big steps later on. So I just we just need to caution on having a middle rate which is actually going backwards. So you know the fees are here, it's been consulted on, everybody knows, and hopefully you and the public realise that the rates have been up massively anyway. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Sober and good. Well, it is. It is actually sober and good. But that's what people have asked for, and that's what we do, and that's what's in the plan. So adjusting it, I think, is is you know, a good decision by us, and being reasonable. Councillors, any further deliberations? I I would like to speak on the topic of the the rates. Um, I think the submissions accurately reflect the community and accurate, I guess reflect us. When we went out, we, um, with the majority, we decided that 2.2% and a targeted relief package of $3 million was the option that we wanted to put to our community. We heard back, we heard as we went through that deliberations, we had councillors who were um, proposing to have a zero rates increase which would have meant that we couldn't have had the relief package. We also had some councillors speak to continuing with the great rise that was indicated in year three of the long-term plan. So the, for me, um, I was really pleased, despite the smallish number of submissions, the reflection of the community and the reflection of our collective um, grouping of, of elected members, which clearly shows that we pretty accurately reflect our community. While I had, I was um, looking specifically for the, um, the the people who wanted a zero rates increase. I was looking for how they could um, show us how we could achieve that while still having the, the relief package. I don't think anybody addressed that specifically, and I don't think any of them um, would really have wanted to not have that relief package available by going to a zero rates increase. The rate, the submitters who spoke of. Um, keep the rates on the same year three because of that bow wave that we'll create. I think one of the other things that um, we need to also collectively reflect on is that we as a local authority are relatively lucky in that we have a fairly diverse economy. With the, certainly the hospitality and tourism sectors are hit hard and that's why we've, we've targeted our targeted relief to those sectors in our community who have been dramatically impacted by the um, COVID-19, and that's why we've changed it. But we also have that, that diverse economy and diverse income streams across our council. We, yes, we have, get a lot of rates, but yes, we also get um, subsidy through various forms. And Council Hulse has talked um, about the, the subsidies that we have received for projects through the Tourism Infrastructure Fund which were 50% funded, so we, we still had to, to stump up with our rate payer investment, and that's good. That's the, the partnership um, model that I think we, we benefit from in our region. We keep hunting those um, uh, subsidies, 
and uh, that's part of this package that we put out to our community that we'll be looking for government investment. We've still got waiting on tenter hooks for some um, additional projects that may be funded through the Crown Infrastructure Partners Programme and through many of our, the other um, government funding which are to stimulate and replace jobs because we know that a number of people in our community have lost their jobs and we hope that the, the work that's been created um, through riparian planting, through weed control, through improving our roadsides, creating cycleways, they will create jobs for the people who have been otherwise displaced from their, from their roles. may not be the dream job, but the, um, you know, as, a, as a former PEP worker myself, um, I'm pretty proud of some of the work that I did back in the, in, in the day. And you look back and you go, that was the right thing for the government of the day to do to support people into employment opportunities. So I'm really, um, I was, was really pleased to see through the, the volumes of, of submissions, the, the range of, um, of support, but also the reflection of us as a, as a group of elected members. I was really pleased about that. And I will totally support the 2.2% increase um, which is, means that we can continue on with our, um, our support package. But I also acknowledge the, um, the, the other projects that have been highlighted through the submissions process. Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, there's two submissions that I feel we should dwell on as a, as a group of councillors, and they come from the, uh, the Ruakaki area. One is from a, an elder, older man um, who has had a career overseas and he um, uh, is a scientist at NASA. And one of the things he said in his submission was that um, perhaps we should look at getting a person who lobbies for us down in Wellington. And it really follows on from what um, Mayor, Her Worship has said. Uh, there is funding down there, and Phil touched on it, that can come in and help us, but we have nobody down there. And a well, wage freeze is on, yes, I, an employment freeze is on. However, if you look at your cost and benefit of spending that cost, it could be massive. So uh, I think some, as, a, as a chamber, we perhaps should think about that. The other submission comes from the Ruakaka Residents and Ratepayers uh, Committee, and I bring it up because it's a particularly well thought through submission and it's pertinent to us now because as we reflect and come to an end on this conversation of the annual plan, there is going to be a requirement of this chamber to put some thought into how we can help some of our communities who are not in this town. So fair enough, this town has been hit hard by the COVID thing and, we, and our, our targeted response uh, deals largely with those people in the town. The fact is, and we've talked about it, that rural communities suffer year in, year out. They don't make a fuss uh, with droughts and so on. Yes, we do have some projects in the past that have been spent, but I think it is now time, as we look at the annual, uh, the, the long-term plan, that, uh, and I guess I'm putting you on warning, that we will, with my mate here, be looking at the side issues. And, I can tell Shelley's right behind me on this out in the rural community. So, thank you very much. Uh. Thank you, Councillor Cooper. It was an interesting submission. Um, I would say that, that um, through our um, membership of the Local Government New Zealand, uh, that we do have that voice in, in Wellington, but I, I agree with you that um, getting our, our voice heard is, is a very important aspect of, of what we do. and. Uh, and connecting through um, the Department of Internal Affairs and various other ways that we ensure that um, that Northland is noted in Wellington. I think it is, somehow. Perhaps not enough to our liking. No. Okay. Councillor Carrillo? Will the parking situation which has been raised by civil submitters, will that actually be brought up in the long-term plan? Uh, are you talking to a specific submission? Well, several submissions within the CBD actually commented on about free parking within the CBD, or for a length of time of free parking in the CBD. One said one hour, one said three hours, and most of them sort of like indicated over the winter time. So the question is, is that something that's going to be dealt with within this lot, or is it going to be dealt with within the long-term plan? I think every opportunity parking is disgusting. Um, 
So the, yes, the long-term plan will be... I would, I would imagine that at the moment when you can't find a car park in town, if they were free, it'd be even harder to find a, a car park. It's been quite buoyant. Uh, any other submissions that we wish to deliberate on? Any other topics? Um, there were a number of other things that were, were raised, um, and I'll put my hand, hand up to declare an interest in, the, in the, my sister's involved with the theatre project, but um, you know, there were submissions around that as well. Uh, so a ra there were a range of, of input into um, our uh, annual plan consultation. Councillor Murphy. Thank you, and I appreciate being able to speak more than once. This is very yes. nice. Well, there are many topics, so that's yeah, one. And so the, one, the, the submission I did want to speak to was the one that we had an email um, from Mr. Templeton. I just wanted to acknowledge that submission, and I empathise with some of the issues that he raised in his submission. Um, and and I, I just wanted to. I mean, it, it is difficult. We had plans. We were going to hire a sustainability advisor. We were moving forward with our climate change work, which will be coming back to council once staff uh, prepared a draft strategy. Um, and then COVID happened, which is frustrating. But I just wanted to make a comment that I think it's still that work is still foremost in council's minds and, and staff. Uh, minds and so we can still, you know, all our the funding that we get from central government for some of the, um, the, the projects that we will do, we'll, we will be looking at how we can reduce um, carbon emissions through things like more investment in our cycleways, um, hopefully, public transport. So, I just wanted to acknowledge that submission um, because for me, that those are still real priorities that I think we need to focus. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Any further discussion on the deliberations? So just to uh, reiterate, we have three recommendations that have been moved and seconded by Councillors Peters and Pocorillo. So that's the first three recommendations. Um, I will put those to the vote. Those in favour, aye. Against? Carry. Did we see all the no, we didn't, did we? Gosh, we went ahead without. So now we're moving into the second part of our deliberations, which are um, confirming any changes, if any, to the um, the annual plan. Uh, now Carolyn has prepared something, something she prepared earlier, and I believe. Which one might do uh, allow our counts? Subscribe to read out of recommendation, please. Councillor House, thank you. That council agree that the targeted rate for the Hikarangi Swamp Scheme is not increased from the 2019-2020 levels. Confirm, no, that's number four. Number five, confirm that no other changes excepting for the change to the targeted rates for the Hikarangi Swamp Scheme will be made to the annual plan 2020-21 as recommended in the deliberations report, and six, note that the submissions outside the consultation question will be used to inform development of the 2020-2031 long-term plan. Councillor Holmes, can I, before you move that, can I ask that we add the words for the 2020-21 financial year for the Hikarangi Swamp? Yeah, Otherwise there's an indication that we're uh, at all. So, Councillor Hulse is moving that. Do we have a, um, a and I'm happy to second, oh, actually, yeah, Councillor okay. Cooper is seconding that. Your Worship, uh, thank you for that, and thank you for the deliberation and discussion. The, um, the situation here is the, the Hickorangi Swamp Beach are a, a bit of a troubled past, but they've actually got a really good committee working together. And I was really particularly pleased with the submission on page 12 of the submission report, volume, volume two. We actually went around and have got every representative of every pocket signed it off. So everyone who contributes has been made aware of, they've signed it off, and the recommendation has allowed them to have a bit of freedom this year, and, but they'll stick to the work program, and that's what the second part of the recommendation, they stick to the work program, and um, they'll probably be back next year if they have to go with something else. But this year is an annual plan process, very good submission, very accurate, 
But um, we've got to recognise that over the last few years, it's just about $2, $2 million worth of debt as farmers in those little rate in that area. So it's done a fantastic job. So thank you very much. Councillor Hobbs. Councillors, any further discussion on those recommendations? Councillor Popperillo. I'd like to move an amendment that the uh, rates be moved to 0% increase. Do I have a seconder for that recommendation? Seconder. Councillor Golightly. Um, you will need to include that the uh, relief package is Absolutely. also removed. The $3 million relief package is removed. Because the two go hand in hand. Why do they go hand in hand, Your Worship? We've gone through that. That's, that was what we consulted on. I don't, I don't believe they go hand in hand, Your Worship. Through you, Madam Chair. If, um, Your Worship, could, I just have, could, I, could we just deal with one item at a time? No, there's, it, it, there's been a, an amendment, so it's been moved and seconded. We will have to deal with it. Through you, Madam Chair, if you want a 0% rates increase, the mechanism for doing that would be to remove the um, the relief package because that is the thing that brings you up to 2% and that is the thing you consulted on. So again, um, it's, it's I was going to say straightforward, it's, it's achievable. Um, we didn't, I, there is some risk in that, I have to say there is some risk in that, but I think it, it all depends on the level of risk aversion for council. There's some risk in the one that you, you've just done as well, um, relatively low in both cases in my view, but not eliminated. So if you're going to, you can do a 0% rates increase as long as you remove it. Any other mechanism would mean that you would have to reconsult. Um, so that's the options for you. So clarification, you, you, you're saying that if we go to zero and the, the three million uh, consultation, will have, we have to reconsult? Yes, you would have to start, start the whole process again. Why would we do that? I just, I'm sorry for clarification, because it basically it's, from what I'm understanding, we went out for submission process. Quite clearly, the two items were, were, were separate and different, and they were itemised separately and differently within the, the consultation package. So why, would they, why are they now linked together? Had you consulted on a zero rates increase, then separately, then you could do this, but you consulted on a 2.2% increase with which is made up of zero rates increase in a, in a package of $3 million. So that's the only legal mechanism. And as I say, even that has some challenge in it, some, some potential for challenge, although I think that we're, we're reasonably solid ground on that. Through you, Madam Chair, the, the, um, this is one of the biggest issues that we, we brought up previously about the rates increases and going up with a zero or 2.2. We were clearly told at that previous meeting that they were completely separate. So we were going out on the rating increase and the um, package. They were two complete separate things. And it was made very, very clear. Councillor Cochran, I think what was made clear was that to enable the $3 million package to be in place, we needed a 2.2% rates increase. So the, the two, you're right, they're, se they're separate, what we, and we ask questions on the, on the two, but the $3 million package could not be there unless there are a 2.2% rates increase, which is what we all collectively agreed we would go out and consult on. The two go hand in glove. That. And the options that were considered, the other options that were considered, were made quite clear in the, in the, in the package on page 7, which said that um, a zero rate, I'll read it, a zero rates rise would have required cost reductions that would seriously impact service delivery. Many of the programs we had planned for next year would not be delivered to the community, and the targeted relief program of $3 million would not be possible. This option would also put us behind in future years as we have learned from past experience of zero rate rises. This could mean larger rates increases in years to come as we catch up. So I, I believe that we made it quite clear to people the impact if we chose zero and the two are, are related. However, Your Worship, I, and I, I'll be quite blunt here, I actually disagree with those findings and I disagree with those figures. At the beginning of this year, we gave out $10 million to the new civic centre with, with a majority going for that, for that. We could quite easily take that $10 million back. So there'd actually be no cost. And it was some of the things that were put in there. So I'm, I'm conscious that you, what you're saying is actually manipulating what's actual effects could be done. 
We haven't given the option for the staff to come around and come up with solutions. So, Councillor Cochrane, you do need to debate your amendment. Is that your debate on the amendment? I will debate the amendment, yes, Your Worship, since we've got that clarification out of the way, and I'm still leaving the, the um, package still in there. advise you that if you are intent on doing 0% plus the package, then you should reconsult to be in, in accordance with the Local Government Act. So you risk being up or you don't risk, I would say there's a reasonable solid chance that you're unlawful in doing that. So if you want, if Councillor Cockerillo wants, if you want to do that, then we will have to start the process again. And, and you know, prepare a new consultation document. So would that need to be part of the recommendation? I, I think it's implicit, but um, it's Councillor Coparillo's motion. Was it, I'm not sure that it's, so it can't, um, we can't adjust that, but I think that it's, it's what it would mean to be lawful. We would need to start again. Is, is that, just a clarification, is that of your opinion or is that a legal opinion? So we've received general advice around this, and I don't know, Dom, did we get advice around the specifics? Yes, we've received We have, and that was the advice we've received. Yeah. Is it very different to what, the, what I would have picked up from the legal teams on that respect? Have you spoken with them about this? No, I've talked to other lawyers about it, and, that's, and that they didn't see there'd be an issue. So there were two complete separate issues on the table. Councillors, we have an amendment. Are you going to speak to your amendment, Councillor Cockrell? Yes, you wish. Thank you. That the rates increase be zero percent. For and, and that basically includes Councillor Holster's stuff in there, where it's where you I think it was item five that we're saying. It says no changes will be made there, that the rates increase would be zero percent. Um, you worship, look, and councillors, I'm concerned with the advice we're getting here. It's very misleading. We've been told, we clearly went out to the public, we clearly went out to the public stating that we, they had several options to, to ask on, and they, they had things like, we, do you want 0%, do you want 2.2, .2, do you want 4.2, are you happy with what we've gone out with? And then the other thing was the, about the consultation side of things, and not consultation, about the, um, the package the special package of $3 million, which again was a separate item. So I'm going by what the submissions that we've received, and from what I can see, out of the 65 people who actually, or submitters who actually submitted on yes or no, they were quite clear that 58% of them said that they wanted on zero, or less than 2.2%. So I'm going by what the submitters have actually come back and told us, and quite clearly told us. We haven't given the staff an opportunity to tell us how they're going to make those savings. We haven't actually allowed the staff to make those, those comments back to us. As councillors, we are the decision-making process. We are setting the standard for the staff to then go and make those, make those comments and how they're going to make those savings. And I'm concerned that if we take that away from them at this present moment, we are merely just being and acting as puppets. And I'm not a puppet. I don't think any of you are either. So just be conscious of what our submitters are saying and what our submitters are asking for, because there is a lot, and I mean a lot, of hurting people out there. And with imminent shutdowns on several of the big corporations around Fomeray and Northland, we are going to expect a lot of people hurting even more. So be conscious of that really conscious of it. Because 2.2% increase for a lot of those people is hard enough as it is, and especially the businesses within the CBD. Um, yeah, you're right from the outset, I was a uh, supporter of a 0% rate increase. Um, we've discussed it a number of times, and we've had a, a number of meetings about it, and 
at a meeting, we voted to go out on a 2.2% increase, and I was part of. I, I voted against that, um, and we've gone out for consultation with that. I accept that that's democracy, and that we, I lost that vote. I now find that I would like to support Councillor Cocorello's motion. However, I, I think this is the democracy, and I'm pretty disappointed with. Well, not disappointed. So I'm. I thought there would be more comment in our submissions from people opposed to the rate increase and it wasn't. So uh, I, I support, I've changed my stance with the, in relation to the 2.2% increase. I support the increase because of the recovery package and because of the certainty it offers the council and our rate payers. So uh, I'd love to support Councillor Cocorello, but uh, I'll be voting for the 2.2. Thank you, Councillor Benny. Councillor Reid. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, We've been to consultation, we've agreed on 2.2%. The silent majority has not spoken. So therefore, I would assume that the silent majority is happy with the 2.2%. We're going to struggle to make a balanced budget with what we've got in front of us. If we go to zero, we're not going to make our balanced budget by a long short. So I'm sorry, Councillor Cocorello, I'm against you. Know, Councillor Reid. Councillor Peters. Initially, I also was interested in a 0% rise in rates. But then, on consideration and listening to the arguments that came out in the chamber, I saw that it was for the better common good for us to be able to offer the services um, that people need in our area. And this includes this package. And so I changed my position and I now believe that we should continue with what is um, what is suggested, the 2.2% uh, rise, and be able to support our constituents in the Whangarei area. So um, I, I don't support uh, Councillor Cockerillo's motion. Thank you, Councillor Peters. Councillor Golightly. I, I seconded Councillor uh, Cockerillo's um, recommendation there because um, I too also agree with the zero rates um, increase although and and I do understand the consequences of those rates decisions um, as I'm sort of making my way through this term. Um, however I will still support Councillor Cocorillo's recommendation. Um, I do um, accept that that is democracy at this stage. Um, I was also unaware that um, the rates relief, the COVID-19 rates relief package was a separate item, um, so I don't know whether that wasn't made quite clear to myself or, or others, so I'm not sure, but I will be supporting Councillor Cockerell in this recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Bellano. Councillor Innes. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I, I have total confidence in uh, supporting a 2.2% uh, growth increase. Uh, it's uh, very much um, <coughs> Gone out for um, uh, consultation, 62%, uh, and then with the uh, relief package, I don't think you can separate the two. Uh, that was part of the consultation, 81% support of the uh, relief package. That gives me confidence. But I'm also mindful that, uh, that this is only one part of, of the puzzle. Uh, the other part's going to be going forward rebuilding our economy as much as we can. Uh, we are going to be dependent on central government for that, in part, along, of course, uh, private investment. So uh, we would be digging ourselves a hole, uh, a serious hole in terms of coming uh, and looking at uh, the recovery. Uh, to me, uh, it's very much needs to be in the frame. Uh, I think 2.2, along with the relief package, is a very good solution that we have. So I won't be supporting uh, Councillor Cocorello's amendment. Thank you, Councillor Innes. Councillor Cutful. Thank you, Worship. I, you took the words out of my mouth when you spoke earlier, because I thought it was a really, the responses that we got through the submissions really did reflect the views around this chamber. And it did make me feel that um, um, that we are actually uh, uh, 
a rich tapestry of um, representatives of the range of views within our community. Um, and, and this is being expressed now in terms of um, Councillor Kokorolo's um, amendment, which I don't support. Um, and I do think it's worth reminding ourselves of two things. One, that the 2.2% increase is effectively standing still. If you take account of inflation, it is effectively a zero rates increase. If we had a zero rates increase, we would actually be going even further backwards. So I think it's really important to take into account the inflation aspect. And the other thing is that we are actually here to make the hard decisions. Um, I look at some of the comments on social media and think, why did I do this to myself? <laughs> but we are here to, to make the decisions that have to be made for the overall future of the district. Um, and I'm just, just was reading a couple of the comments because I think Councillor Kokorillo has not been entirely accurate in terms of the reflection of the submissions we had, which I agree were not a huge number and, and it's unfortunate that there weren't more, but the majority of the submitters actually supported a rates increase of 2.2% or more. And there's one here, and I'll just read a little bit from it, and I won't say who the lucky person is who's been read out, but we must, at minim as a minimum, keep up with inflation at 2.2%. 0% just simply shouldn't even be an option on the table. This will only have a bigger impact on us all further down the road. I would equally be happy with the original 4.2% or something in between to ensure Whangarei keeps moving forward. Making difficult decisions at a time like this is why we have elected, uh, we have elected members and who have shown strong leadership. And I thought that submitter really said it all. So I'm sorry, Councillor Cockerillo, but I will not be supporting it and I certainly support the 2.2%. Um, yes, it's one of those things that we don't want to have to pay for, but because we want the lifestyle that we have, we need to be able to ensure that we can do the best that we can to continue it as much as possible. With sustainability and ensuring we have a greener future, we need to make sure that we do spend the appropriate amount, not look at the basic costs to ensure that we're not just focusing on what we can get through with, but what we can have for a brighter future. Because we do need to ensure that we are looking after all everybody as much as we possibly can. With the 124 submissions that we did receive, including the two that we received after, which was good that we included them, um, of the 96,000 plus people that live in Whangarei who submitted, uh, that could have submitted, either there's the silent majority that, ag that agrees, or there's the silent majority that also didn't get the opportunity to be able to do so. But as with um, Councillor Cutforth just bringing up the point of we were voted into this position to be able to make the hard decisions and have to be able to hard decisions. And it is good that um, Councillor Cockrell brings these points up because it is good to be able to discuss these, it is good to argue them, and it is also we need to have discussion about these things rather than just silently sit back and just allow things to, to progress. We need to be able to delve into these issues because otherwise, right now, we have one of those issues that, that's silent silent, silent, and now everybody's blowing up with all this race issues, Black Lives Matter, because people aren't being listened to. And it's only when things, everybody gets comfortable and sits back and it all kind of goes through that these issues can keep on arising. But at the same time, if we don't pay attention to somebody doing a, 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 a silent, but also minor comment, we need to make sure that we are paying attention. So I'm not in support of the amendment. I'm in support of the 2.2%. I do take note of the people that are saying that we would be better for more. There is people that have made the submissions and have said they they haven't mentioned anything on the rates being or this, that, and the other. There's not no mention on the circuit centre because it's not it's not a dwelling issue for them. They've brought up the issues or they support the, the um, COVID package that has been provided as well. It is that thing that we do have to make sure that we're trying to progress as much as possible as well. Um, with a lot of people, if, 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 if you really wanted to look at the basics of it, what we need to survive is very basic. We, 
but there's a lot of people out there that need a sense of place, that need places that can inspire them to be able to go through. So it is, it, and as much as you may agree with art, or may agree with sports, or may agree, with, it's, all, it's, it's all a passion, it's all a drive. And we need a diverse combination of all of them so that we can support all four well-beings as the basis. We need to have an, a balanced table, not of just the economy. We need a balance of culture and health and all the, all the other well-beings and make sure that we can progress forward. It's not a perfect system. We need to be able to make sure that we are moving forward and the only way in this system that we have with money and inflation and all those type of things, we need to be able to build resilience in the community, make sure that people can support each other, but also provide the basics as well as the, the cherry on the top per se, to make sure that it is as, as fluid as possible. And so it works forward, because we need to address some issues and they're not going away, as um, Councillor Murphy brought up. Councillor Connor. Councillor Cooper. Uh, I speak because I feel it's important to be on the record on this one and have no ambiguity as to where you stand. I was going to support uh, Vince Coppervillo's, uh, Councillor Coppervillo's motion. However, I do support some of the, um, I guess the, uh, I'm struggling for a word, but some of the things that you bring up within it, um, and that is the fact that we can find money to increase, as one of our um, submitters said, the Parks and Recreation Reserve thing, millions of dollars uh, without question. Uh, we do put money through. Uh, so I have sympathy, uh, Councillor Cockerillo, but I will not be supporting it. I think the targeted package uh, is far, far more effective way of giving relief to those who need it. Thank you, Councillor Cooper. Councillors, I won't be supporting the amendment. While I agree with the intent that Councillors Cockerillo and Golightly are wanting to show that they are hearing that people want a zero rates increase, I have real concern with already asking our team operationally to reduce their budgets by $3.7 million. They're reducing staff costs by $2 million. And those are significant costs. If they have to find another three million dollars in our operating budgets, we're already struggling to provide the levels of service on the 2.2 percent increase. If the councillors had suggested that the three million dollar relief package was taken away as a result of a zero rates increase, we'd still be suffering those other costs as well. And I may have had some sympathy for that, but there was no indication that the sacrifice that we'd have to make is in the relief package. The $3 million relief package is targeted to those people who have been impacted significantly by COVID. That's why we put it there. And that's why I cannot support the amendment. Because the only way we can continue with a support package is with the 2.2% rates increase. Any further debate? Yes. Speak on the on the amendment. First of all, it's very unusual because I actually moved the motion, and I, well, I'm very careful to, to to what the discussion about the amendment because it has an influence and may change the original motion. And so, originally, um, obviously, I don't want to say too much because I want the motion to be successful. The um, just want to share a bit of caution. If you think we're having a hard process now, wait till next year when the true costs come out. Uh, we need to position ourselves to be, be in a really good position. And some of the statements made like reducing staff costs, we haven't reduced staff costs. We've maintained the same level. We didn't put in the increased feet. So we've got to be careful, keep our feet in the ground. And um, that's all I wanted to say. Well, the forecast in the long term plan to increase staff costs two point something million dollars. So we haven't reduced. We always said that's going to operate on the same level this year. The sad thing is, and true here, particularly in the government in the last six weeks, there's been nothing said about trying to get efficiencies in local government. Efficiencies will only come if elected members <coughs> put pressure on various parts. And that is what I'd like to see here, is the efficiency first, cost second, and then a good decision at the end. Okay, thank you. So the amendment, um, can we read out the amendment? Let the rates increase be 0%. Cool. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Call so, Councillor Innes has called for a division. Councillors, I will put the amendment. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Councillor Cockerello and Go Lightly. And those against? Councillors Connor, Hulse, Peters, Reed, Innes, Murphy, Cutfors, Benny, Cooper, Deeming, and Her Worship the Mayor. And abstaining? Yeah. Councillor Martin. Oh, it was. Oh, lost. So it uh, comes back to the original motion. Uh, any further discussion on the original motion? Right of reply, Councillor House? No. Thank you, Worship. No, I don't need a right of reply. I think we've heard the discussion. Thanks very much. I will put the, uh, the motion, and a division has been called for by oh. Councillor House. Um, so those in favour, please raise your hands. Councillors Cockerillo, Connor, Hulse, Peters, Reed, Innes, Murphy, Go Lightly, Cutforth, Benny, Cooper, Deeming, and Her Worship the Mayor. And abstain. Are those against? And those abstaining? Councillor Martin. Carried. Carried. Councillors, thank you. That was a momentous decision. Um, and the, I know our, our operations team have got a hard job ahead of them actually to um, proceed with the annual plan as it is with the increases but I thank them for the work that they've put in and um, I challenge you to um, keep going for that balanced budget on two accounts, two accounting methods. So councillors, that brings us to the end of our meeting today. Thank you all for your attendance and I will close the meeting at 11.19. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you.